this is pointless. You know, if you're like most people, or at least most men, you get your own place and you think the first thing you need to do is go out and buy a steel chainsaw. At least that's what I thought because growing up my dad always had a gas powered steel chainsaw and I always thought it was so awesome when we got to go cut down a tree. Problem is when you fast forward to being an adult and you buy that steel chainsaw, which is what I did. Actually, I think my dad got me it as a gift. Thank you, dad. It was awesome until probably the first season went through its courses. I didn't use it, but maybe one time. And when I went to go use it on time number two, it didn't start very well. It was, um, the gas was bad because I didn't maintain it. I didn't take care of it and I didn't use it enough really. Every time I go to use that chainsaw, it was a problem for me because of my own demise. I didn't take care of it. Well, fast forward now, we've got battery power and I went out and I bought this DeWalt Flexvolt chainsaw because I just really, I heard a bunch of good things about it. There's a bunch of other brands out there. Definitely battery powers come so far that they're doing things that you wouldn't normally expect to be good. And I feel like the chainsaw category is one of those. Now I know there's a ton of you out there. They're going to be like, listen, there's no replacement for a steel. Yeah, I get it. That's like the best in my opinion, or a Husqvarna or whatever gas powered chainsaw. If you're a lumberjack, you're not gonna use a gas-free battery-powered chainsaw, most likely. I don't know, maybe in the future you will. But for me, I do one little job a year. I got limbs I gotta clean up. You saw the limbs that are down in my yard from winter and it never fails. I go to use my steel and it doesn't start. So what do we have here? Basically, like I said, I bought the DeWalt now about a year ago. As soon as I got into the FlexVolt system, it made sense because I, I actually had the 20 volt chainsaw as well and I gave it to my mother-in-law. She uses it all the time, she loves it and it's, it's pretty small, I think it's a 12 inch bar. But basically with the uh, DeWalt FlexVolt, this is gonna run on the 60 volt platform and it usually, I think it came with a 6.0 battery which is I think a three amp hour FlexVolt or if you're using it in the 20 volt system as a 20 volt battery, it'll be at your uh, six amp hour rating. So this has got a 16 inch bar, which uh, is underneath this sleeve. And this is an Oregon bar here with a chain, uh, 40 centimeters. I think it's 56 teeth or something like that. I don't know really what that means, but I read that stat before I did this video. It weighs in like around 13.2 pounds. So, you know, when you're doing things above your head and maybe if you're not very experienced, weight is definitely a factor. It makes you feel a lot more comfortable when you pick up a tool that is somewhat intimidating to most people anyway. If it doesn't feel like a million pounds, you're gonna feel good about it. What DeWalt claims is that they're gonna get 70 cuts through a six by six with this saw. Now, I don't really ever believe that stuff. I don't really quantify it into anything that we really care about. You know, it's, a, it's something that you, once you use, you find how good it is for you and your application. I've used this chainsaw. Usually I put like a 9.0 battery in it. Now I got the 12 amp hour batteries that I'll use. And it, it just lasts usually way longer than you need for the application that a person that's using a battery powered saw is gonna need, right? So that's pretty cool because they do last a really long time. Now this has a 3.9 Nm torque rating. Um, I don't even know what that means actually. So the Newton meter is a unit of torque in the SI system. One Newton meter is equal to the torque resulting from a force of one Newton applied perpendicularly to the end of a moment um, Okay. So I don't know that that really means much. I do know that in, in doing some research, the Milwaukee has an 8.0 Newton meter rating. So basically the DeWalt is half the Newton meters of a Milwaukee. One thing that I do like about the DeWalt, however, versus this Milwaukee, is it has a bunch of tool-free adjustments for both the chain and the bar. So obviously anytime you don't have to find a tool because wrenches always go missing or whatever, that's kind of nice. You've just got a nice, uh, 
basically a turn dial that you can loosen or tighten. So that is nice if you've ever used a chain saw, you know you gotta keep that tight because it will loosen up over the life of the chain. Gonna have an automatic brake, which is, you know, both of these are gonna have in case you get bind up in something and it kind of lurches you forward. It's going to allow you to do a real quick stop. What I like about the Milwaukee, and they sent me this, so just wanna be clear on that, uh, but what I like about it is once again, it's using the 18 volt system. I think there's some 170 or 80 plus tools that are in that battery platform. So once you kind of are in the 18 volt system, they're kind of committed to staying there. You can use just about any battery that you have for this. Now it comes with a 12 amp hour battery and they're claiming like 150 cuts, but Milwaukee fails to tell you how many of those cuts or what size material they're using. So once again, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Will it work for you and how many cuts you're gonna need for your small job? Probably yes, I've cut an entire tree down. And after cutting that whole tree down, I was able to break it down into small enough pieces to get it to the burn pile. I used it and I only used one bar in that 12 amp hour battery. So definitely I feel like the runtime on the Milwaukee with that 18 volt system seems to be a little bit better. But in all fairness, I do now have a 12 amp hour battery for the DeWalt. So maybe in an apples to apples comparison, they're pretty similar. The thing about the Milwaukee is it does not have a tool free adjustment. So you've got uh, some nuts here and where a flat head or a, a driver is gonna go in and they've got a storage here space for the tool. So this is where they're gonna store the tool. But to be honest, it is super tough to get out. I always have to stick something yeah, I can't even get it out with my fingers if I'm being honest. I have to like stick something in there. But that's gonna be what you're gonna use, which is very similar to like your steel chainsaws. So, you know, they're all adjustable. They both have brakes. The electronic brakes are actually quite impressive how quickly they stop. Well, those are all the stats. Those are the information that the brands want you to know about these tools. But I wanna know how they feel, how they operate, and I'm sure you do too. So let's go out and clean up that tree that's been down in my front yard all winter. So basically, if you guys didn't know already, I'm a fan of the battery powered chainsaw for a guy like me who doesn't do it every day. You get a mess in the yard, you don't wanna mess with fuel and additives and all the other garbage that goes along with a gas powered chainsaw, even though the gas powered is probably gonna be better over the long run. 
if you're doing it every day, all day. However, I haven't even used a bar on either of these batteries, just doing some quick cutting. Uh, I'll get this whole pile cleaned up with either one of these on one battery, no big deal. And they work, I think, really well, either one. I feel like the RPM is a little higher on the DeWalt, but I feel like the power is a little greater with the Milwaukee. But honestly, either brand, I think Makita has a two times 36 volt version that people love, but I don't have it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below if you guys use either of these or the Makita or any other battery powered version for that matter. But thanks a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed the tools day. Check in next week. We'll try to keep coming out with these weekly tools days if you guys like them. So definitely make sure you subscribe and hit that thumbs up. You know, do the whole bell notification garbage if you're into that sort of thing. I'd appreciate the support. Thanks a lot, guys.